Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of March 28, 2019. I am Majority Leader Cumbo. Will all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Humphrey Samuel. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Morelli. Here. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. I'm here. Joni. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lansman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca, Torres, Traeger, here, Ulrich, Ballone, here, Van Bramer, here, Jaeger, Matteo, Combo, present, Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the Venerable Yu Wang Shi of the Fo Guang Shan at the International Buddhist Progress Society located in Flushing, Queens. Please all rise. Good afternoon, council members and guests. Thank you for inviting me to provide an invocation for today's meeting. May I tell you about the Buddha, our teacher? He was a very wise man, and much of what he shared with us in common, in the spirits of all faiths, that is, to be kind to one another, to do no harm to one another in the world, and to help relieve suffering. Let us now pray in his name and the name of your spiritual leaders. Today, we ask the Buddha's wisdom to help guide our community leaders to use wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our times, to know the true sense of the welfare and needs of the people in our community, to understanding the importance of justice for all, rich and poor, powerful and struggling. To protect our natural resources, understanding that all citizens, and in fact, all sentient beings, are dependent upon open spaces, pure water, and clear air. To have the ability to work together in harmony, even when there is honest disagreement. Then us therefore pray that this body deliberates in a manner that is without record or ill will, 
that brings comfort to the citizens and progress to the community. That all decisions are made with the foresight and deep understanding of the needs of all citizens. And that is the body leads the community in a manner that celebrates our diversity, understanding that we are all interconnected, that our welfare and happiness are dependent upon respect and acceptance of all people, no matter their race, religion, sexual orientation, or no matter their original home. Leadership requests courage, courage to make difficult and times unpopular decisions. May our council members have courage to lead our community today and always. May our leaders find personal peace and joy in their public responsibilities by helping others and assuring a bright future for all. At this council works for the citizens of New York City, we offer this verse penned by Venerable Master Xingyun, our founder of a Fo Guangshan monastic order. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinity to benefit all beings. May Chan Pure Land and precepts inspire equality and patience. May our humanity and gratitude give rise to great vows. Thank you for listening. Omitofo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Venerable Yu Wang Shi. A very timely prayer, uh, certainly one that echoes many of the values we hold here as far as peace, kindness, interconnections, and we appreciate that, particularly during Women's History Month. Thank you so very much, and I will now ask for Council Member Chin to spread the invocation below. Okay, we will now ask Council Member Ku to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable Yong Wang Shi, Yong Wang Fasi. The Venerable Yong Wang presides an international Buddhist order known as the International Buddhist Progress Society. She was fully ordained in 2008 at the North American headquarters, Shai Lai Temple in California. Venerable Yu Wen was a volunteer at An Yong Temple in Austin, Texas, where she joined the Buddhist Lights International Association and was elected as president prior to becoming monastic. Not only is she well versed in the Buddhist te uh, teachings, but she also specializes in teaching children Chinese as a second language and spent many years as a teacher in both Taiwan and the United States. She has served as the executive director of Buddhist Light Sai Lai School for four years and as the director of general affairs of the An Yong Temple. She has served with us here in Fushing at the world-renowned Fu Guangshan Temple since 2014 as the executive director and trusted spiritual leader of our community. I'm deeply honored and ever grateful for her contributions to our community. And I would like to make a motion to spread an invocation in full upon the record. Daja omitofu, wish everyone omitofu. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. And I know that Venerable Yu Wang Shi um, has invited us all to a meditation retreat for the City Council, and I think we could all use a little meditation in our lives. <laughs> Thank you. I would now like to bring us to the adoption of the minutes uh, by Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of February 13, 2019 be adopted as printed. Thank you, Councilmember Van Bramer. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. 
Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M147 through pre-considered M150, various budget documents. Finance. Majority Leader. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? Excuse me, M151. Uh, thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Uh, just a reminder, this is just on land use call-ups that we're voting on right now. Adams. I vote aye. Ampre Samuel. Ayala. I vote aye. Barron. Aye on all. Borelli. Permission to vote uh, on all land use and general order items? Permission granted. I thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all land use uh, and aye on all except pre-considered M149, uh, pre-considered Reso 805, intro 1064B, and the accompanying Reso 815. Thank you. Brennan. Aye on all. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye. Joe Nye. Aye and all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Permission to vote on all land use call ups and resolutions on today's general calendar? Yes. Um, I vote yes on everything except for resolution 75A. 20, no on resolution 296, no on resolution 6, 734A, no on resolution 737A, no on resolution 738, no on resolution 741A, no on resolution 742A, no on resolution 743, no on resolution 744, and no on resolution 745. I do not support legalizing marijuana. Thank you. Cool. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Uh, with permission, I, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. I vote yes. Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. Menchaca. Okay, I gotta go. I don't know. Miller. I vote aye. Moya. <laughs> Perkins. Powers. I vote aye. Reynoso. I vote aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups, a couple of items on general order calendar and resolutions. Madam Majority Leader. Permission granted. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Torres. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero negatives. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Shh. Thank you all for being here with us on this Thursday. We have a busy, a very busy agenda ahead of us. Before we begin, I want to remember some of those who have passed in the weeks since our last stated meeting. We have lost, sadly, yet another 9-11 first responder. Gregory Vincent Cerisi, 
to illnesses he developed serving down at Ground Zero on behalf of the entire City Council. I want to thank Gregory for his bravery, and I send my deep condolences to Gregory's wife and his three children. Bob Slade, the iconic radio host. Bob Slade, the iconic radio host, died on Monday after battling kidney disease. On his show, Open Line, Bob gave a voice to many issues facing New York City's African-American community. On behalf of the City Council, I'd like to extend my sympathy to Bob's family, friends, and colleagues. We also got some sad news just this morning that former City Parks Commissioner and former New York City Council member Henry Stern passed away yesterday. Henry lived a life of public service and he loved every minute of it. The joy he brought to the work of serving the people of New York was legendary. And let's let Henry's life of unbridled enthusiasm be an inspiration to all of us. We get to serve the people in the greatest city in the world. On March 19th, Dr. Janet Lieberman, an educational pioneer who fought to make education more accessible to New Yorkers, passed away. She helped shape and build LaGuardia Community College where just a few weeks ago, I held my first State of the City address. LaGuardia holds a special place in the heart of this city, and all New Yorkers are grateful for the life led by Dr. Janet Lieberman. We also lost Lu Duan Wu, a Lyft driver, who took his own life this past weekend. He was 49 years old. Our thoughts are with his family and friends. There has been an upsetting and disturbing pattern and epidemic of for hire vehicle and taxi drivers taking their own lives in our city. This council is committed to helping drivers of taxis and four-hour vehicles deal with the emotional, mental, and financial pain caused by an industry in turmoil and upheaval. Although these next three individuals are not New Yorkers, it's still important we recognize their loss. In the past week, Jeremy Richmond, Sidney Aiello, and Calvin Desir all took their own lives. Sidney and Calvin, were survivors of the Parkland school shooting in Florida. And Jeremy lost his daughter in the Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook shooting in 2012. All three of these deaths are tragedies that speak to the ongoing trauma caused by gun violence in our country, which lingers for years and decades and lifetimes after the shootings take place. My heart breaks for the suffering they endured, and I remind every single American that thoughts and prayers alone are not enough, and that we must do concrete things to stop gun violence in this country. We must console and we must pray. We also must fight with all of our hearts to make change. And now, if we could all rise and take a moment of silence in memory of Gregory Cerisi, Robert Spencer, Bob Slade, Janet Lieberman, Lu Duan Wu, Jeremy Richmond, Sidney Aiello, and Calvin Desir. Thank you all. This stated meeting also falls in the same week as the 108th anniversary of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire, the deadliest <clears throat> industrial tragedy in our city's history. This fire took 146 lives, and it forever changed our country. Those who lost their lives did not die in vain. The tragedy sparked the birth of the American labor movement, which has changed lives for the better for countless Americans Almost all of these lives that were lost were young women. We owe it to all of those who lost their lives in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire to continue to fight for workers' rights. Today, there is also cause for celebration, as it is our last stated meeting in Women's History Month. None of us would be the people we are today without the women in our lives. The New York City Council wouldn't be as strong as it is today without the women in it, and we must do more to elect more women in all offices, especially in this body where we need more women. 
Thank you to the amazing, inspiring, hardworking women of the New York City Council and all of the fantastic women on our staffs here at the Council. You each play a vital role here at the New York City Council. We would not be able to do the work without all of you, so a big round of applause to all the amazing women. I also want to remind everyone that uh, this Saturday, March 30th, we kick off Participatory Budgeting Vote Week. A total of 32 council members, including myself, are participating this year in this community-driven program. This is our eighth consecutive year of PB in New York City, a process that's all about democracy, local democracy, and transparency. This evening, I am uh, kicking off an event, and so I'm so excited to kick off this process. And then lastly, I want us to welcome a council member who is joining us from the great city of Seattle. Council member Teresa Mosqueda is here. Welcome. Great to have a fellow council member from another great city join us today, so we're glad you're here in New York. Thank you for everything that you do, and I know that you've been working with individual council members led by Council Member Lander on working together to see what municipalities can do and learning from each other on progressive policies that can make a difference for the lives of the people that we serve. Now let's dive into the agenda for today. The council will vote on the following land use items, 63 Stockholm Street and 332 Eldert Street in Council Member Reynoso and Espinal's district. These are urban development and action area plan area projects which will facilitate the construction of new affordable housing. The council will vote on the following tax exemptions. Cooper Square MAHA phase one in council member Rivera's district, which is the renovation of an affordable building and 167 West 133rd Street in council member Perkins's district for the preservation of units. The council will vote on the following finance items. The council will vote on the operating budget as prepared by the council's administrative services division and the Council will vote on the following two Article 11 property tax exemptions. 369 East 8th Street in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district uh, is going to facilitate the preservation of affordable housing, and Glendale Apartments in Councilmember Holden's district will provide a partial 40 year exemption to preserve additional affordable units. We're going to vote on an expense budget modification and revenue budget modification for the fiscal 2019 budget. We reached an agreement. Uh, for $1.6 million in emergency allocation to fund the New York Immigrant Family Unity Project. This is an urgent need to increase legal funding to help immigrants facing deportation. I am proud we were able to reach an agreement with Mayor de Blasio to provide additional funding to NIFIP. This emergency funding will help us provide more attorneys to New Yorkers in need. This is a crucial fight as the ICE deportation machine has ramped up efforts to interfere with the necessary work NIFIP is doing by pushing people through the system with zero regard for due process. I will continue to fight for these un-American and horrific immigration. I will fight against these un-American and horrific immigration policies. I want, to, I want to commend the amazing and crucial work provided by the attorneys at NIFIP. Uh, Council Member Menchaca, the chair of our Immigration Committee, and myself visited uh, Immigration Court on Varick Street in my district last week, and it was disturbing to see what was happening there. ICE had gone from having three courtrooms to increase to five courtrooms for the purposes of avoiding NIFIP attorneys being able to be in the courtroom to be able to uh, give access to an attorney to these uh, folks who are facing deportation proceedings, and this funding will allow NIFIP and the three legal service organizations to cover all five courtrooms immediately after we saw what was happening last week when we visited. That day, we went to the administration and asked them to come up with an agreement for emergency funding to provide immediate services to these folks because of the number of deportations that are happening every single day on Varick Street, and I am really proud that with this infusion of emergency funds, the three legal, legal service organizations will be able to cover all five courtrooms to help immigrants here in New York City. Moving on, the council will vote on the following legislation. The council will vote on 11 resolutions relating to the legalization of marijuana, including calling on the state to legalize cannabis for adult use and calling on Congress to pass the Marijuana Justice Act, which would remove marijuana from the list of federally controlled substances. It is far past time to legalize marijuana, and I'm excited that New York City is finally considering this long overdue policy shift. But as we debate what legalization looks like, it is of paramount 
paramount importance that we always remember the harm caused by the war on drugs and the mass incarceration state that we've built, particularly in communities of color. That is why we are calling for marijuana convictions to be expunged and for those convictions to not be used to terminate someone's public housing. We're also calling for business opportunities that are generated by a legal marijuana industry to be dedicated to those communities that were most harmed, including people with past convictions. In order for those business opportunities to be meaningful, we're calling on the state to ban vertical integration so that small businesses aren't drowned out by a large corporate industry. In addition, New York City needs to have more control over how marijuana regulations are put in place because legal marijuana is going to impact the city much differently than other areas throughout the state. We are calling for the authority to decide how to regulate public consumption and because we have been stuck with state imposed penalties for too long, we need to be able to do something about the racially disparate enforcement of any penalty. We are calling for the authority to decide what rules for growing marijuana and home delivery should be in New York City, given that those issues are so unique in the context of the most densely populated city in the country. And finally, we're calling for some authority to decide how licenses are issued so we can make sure that legalization will actually benefit black and Latino communities that have been disproportionately impacted by marijuana criminalization. Introduction 1010, sponsored by Councilmember I. Danique Miller, would create an alternate means of enforcement adjudicated through oath for certain types of commercial vehicles illegally parked overnight on a residential street. This new, these newly created fines would be higher than those in existing law, $400 for a first offense and $800 for a second offense with a, within a six-month period. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, James DiGiovanni, Elliot Lynn, and Brad Reed. Introduction 1166A, sponsored by Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct a year-long assessment of potential determinants of Legionnaire's disease in New York City. Introduction 1164A, sponsored by Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez, would require that the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene report annually to the City Council on the results of building cooling tower inspections and make such results available online. Introduction 1158, sponsored by Council Member and Health Chair Mark Levine, would require that the Commissioner of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, in consultation with the Department of Buildings, hold information sessions at least twice annually for building owners regarding maintenance, cleaning, and inspections of cooling towers, and to post that information online. Introduction 1149, sponsored by Council Member Ben Kalos, would require that the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene send owners and operators of cooling towers and an electronic reminder prior to the filing deadline for annual certifications with a link to where these certifications can be submitted. This bill would also require cooling tower inspectors to report to DOHMH in real time when inspections occur. And finally, this bill would require building owners to make cooling tower inspection results available for public examination. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of bills, Sarah Liss, uh, Janan uh, Zilka, Christopher Sartori, and Zia Emmanuel Halo. Next, introduction 1308A, sponsored again by Councilmember Mark Levine, who's our health committee chair, would require an individual that requests the Department of Mental Hygiene to be able to redact the name of a, of, a, of a physician from a birth record when that physician's license has been surrendered or revoked by the New York State Office of Professional Medical Conduct. Chair Levine will speak specifically about some amazing folks that are with us today that were really the catalyst behind this bill and making it possible and their advocacy and hard work. I'm really proud of the chair for his work on this bill and I'm really glad we're passing this today. Introduction 1064, uh, and the staff that worked on that is Jayasuri uh, Ganaparthi, uh, Sarah Liss, and Zia Emanuel uh, Halu. Introduction 1064B, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, will require that restaurants in New York City only offer water, sparkling water, flavored water, non-fat or 1% milk, non-dairy milk, 100% fruit or vegetable juice, or fruit or vegetable juice combined with water or carbonated water as the default option, including on children's meals. I want to uh, congratulate Councilmember Kalos, who's worked on this for years, and I want to thank the same staff, uh, J. Sri uh, Ganapathy, Sarah Liss, and Zia Emanuel Haley. Lou. 
giving parents a healthier default drink option in their child's fast food is a welcome and much needed change. This change will hopefully set a precedent for current parents and future generations to make better choices overall in the kinds of beverages they consume when they visit a fast food, rest, a fast food establishment. I want to thank Councilmember Kalos for again for his work on this bill. And I also want to thank the New York Academy of Medicine, the American Cancer Network, the American Heart Association, uh, NYU School of Medicine, and the American Beverage Association for working collaboratively together to come up with a final bill to pass. And this is a groundbreaking piece of legislation uh, in the entire country. Uh, this is about everyone getting together for the good of our children, and I'm very proud of that end result. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We will now move into discussion of general orders, and we will begin with Councilmember Danique Miller. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to waive my time to say. Okay. I'm, I'm going to dis discuss my bill later on, but there is uh, another portion I want to talk. I'm waiting on the information now. Thank you. Thank you. And so I will turn your time over to Councilmember Ben Kalos. With your vote for introduction 1064B, kids' meals at 24,000 restaurants in New York City are about to get healthier when water, 100% fruit juice, and low-fat milk become the new normal. Obesity is an epidemic in New York City with more than half of adults overweight or obese, according to the Department of Health. The American Heart Association recommends that children limit consumption of one or fewer eight-ounce sugary drink per week. But children are drinking 30 gallons of sugary drinks every year, and that's enough to fill a bathtub. While families can still choose a sugary beverage, McDonald's menus are already in compliance, and I quote, more than half of Happy Meals served in the United States include water, milk, or juice as the beverage of choice. I want to thank the American Heart Association for their support and a survey that found 94% support from New Yorkers. Thank you to Speaker Cory Johnson, who secured the endorsement of the American Beverage Association, clearing the way for passage today at the New York City Council. Please also consider voting for introduction 1149B. A woman in my district died and six got sick from Legionnaire's disease in 2017. Thanks to local law 77 of 2015, championed by our former housing health chair, Corey Johnson, we knew more, where more than 100 cooling towers were so we could test them and clean them before anyone else got sick or died. In 2018, WNYC reported more than 1,000 towers were not getting inspected every 90 days as required. My own analysis found that number has more than doubled since then to over 2,000. New Yorkers can breathe easier as warm weather and cooling season approaches as cooling towers that are breeding grounds for legionnaires will finally have to report compliance with 90-day inspections meant to thwart the spread of the deadly disease. Thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson, Laura Popa, Jeff Baker, Janan Zilka, and the Department of Health for their partnership in saving lives. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos, and we will now bring it to Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. Thank you so much. Uh, and what I want to do is also talk uh, in favor of the incredible allocation that's going to the three providers that are part of Knife Up. The only things that I want to add to that are our incredible commitment as a council for the last few years, since 2014, we have been committed to ensuring that everyone that is in a deportation proceeding gets a lawyer. That's called due process. That's something that's fundamental to this country, and we're committing yet again to ensuring that these two new court uh, judges that were appointed as part of this deportation machine, as part of a machine that's values that are based on white supremacy and whitening America to remove our immigrants from our communities, that New York City Council is stepping up. This is in partnership with the mayor, and so I want to thank not just the speaker, but the mayor who responded quickly. This is not over, and so as I have your ear, this work that we're gonna be doing out of this immigration committee is to ensure that we understand that the full scope of work is gonna to have to continue to next fiscal year, which means that there's a larger number of dollars that are gonna to have to be allocated for full representation. Not, ev not everyone will have representation if we do not fully fund it. The advocates are gonna come back to us, but I just wanna say thank you so much. Today you'll be voting on something that brings us back to universal representation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. And now we will begin the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. 
Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered M147 and Reso 813 through pre-considered Reso 805, various budget documents. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 377 and Reso 817 and pre-considered LU 378 and Reso 818, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, intro 1064B, children's meals. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro, excuse me, intro 1164A and 1166A, Legionnaire's Disease and Cooling Tower Inspections. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1308A, physicians' names on birth certificates. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1149B and 1158, cooling towers. Coupled on general orders. Report, report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 347 and Reso 819, Cooper Square. Coupled on general orders. LU 357 and Reso 820 and LU 358 and Reso 821, UDAP, Brooklyn. Coupled on general orders. LU 359 and Reso 822, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. LU 366 and Reso 823, Tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. LU 376 and Reso 824, Blondell Commons. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. <clears throat> Excuse me, M140 and Reso 825, approving the appointment of David Burney, Planning Commission. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1010A, Commercial Vehicle Parking. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders. And at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. And before we go to that vote, I want to remind uh, all of the council members here today that we're voting on 11 resolutions, and we need a quorum for those 11 resolutions. So you have to stay in the chambers until we get to the end of the agenda for general discussion. So at this time, I ask for a roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. I congratulate all of my colleagues for their legislation passing in these chambers today. I do vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Brannon. Aye. Matteo. Uh, no one preconsidered M149, accompanying resolution 815. No one preconsidered Reso 805, and no one 106B. I and the rest. Cabrera. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. Uh, no on 1064 and aye on the rest. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. I am explaining my no votes on 10 resolutions. They are 75A, 296, 734A, 737A, 738A, 741A, 742A, 743, 744, and 745. They are all dealing with the legalization of marijuana, so I'm expressing my opposition to that by voting no on those 10 resolutions, and the rest I'm voting yes. Thank you, Madam. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Thank you, and I just want to remind all members that we will be holding discussion on the resolutions until after. So we're discussing right now the bills that are before us currently. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Jonai. Aye on all. Grodenchik. Aye on all. I just want to uh, add my words to that of uh, the speaker about uh, Commissioner Henry Stern, former councilman, uh, his passion for parks. Uh, was unbridled, and uh, it's a big loss to our city. Uh, I want to thank my colleague, uh, Danique Miller, for passing legislation to deal with out-of-control large trucks on the streets of Eastern Queens. And again, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. Ku. Aye. Uh, Kozlowitz. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. 
Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much. I want to uh, congratulate uh, Councilmember Kalos on a very important bill to help improve the diet of young people in the city when they're going to restaurants and acknowledge the work of great advocates who help push for this, um, including Robin Vitale at the American Heart Association and Michael Davoli at the American Cancer Society. And I want to thank my colleagues who have helped push forward a very important package of bills to tackle the mounting crisis of Legionnaires' disease in this city, including um, lead sponsors, uh, Councilmember uh, Salamanca, Rodriguez, also Councilmember Kalos, and I'm pleased to sponsor one of those bills, uh, intro 18, uh, excuse me, 1358, 1858. But I, I want to use the rest of my time to speak about a very important bill that we're voting on today, intro 1308. The Me Too movement has exposed abuse in sector after sector of this society, including in the medical profession, including, most appallingly, among obstetricians, some of whom have abused women at their most vulnerable moments. And for those women to endure that and then have to look at the name of the abuser, of their abuser on, their, on the birth certificate of their children is absolutely abhorrent. We are inflicting ongoing pain on women who have survived this abuse. And I am so grateful we're passing a law today to help provide a small measure of relief to those women. And it is thanks to the leadership of an incredible, incredible person who happens to be sitting behind me, Marissa Hochstetter. Um, if you could stand up briefly. She's here with her wonderful husband and children. She has campaigned bravely, tirelessly, brilliantly, with incredible determination to ensure this bill that we're voting on today will allow her and other survivors of this abuse to remove the name of their abuser off the birth certificate of their children. There are dozens of women, at least, in the city who will benefit from this action. And I want to thank this body for voting in favor of this important bill. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, and thank you for your courage and your bravery, particularly recognizing this while you're making women's history every single day. Thank you so much. Menchaca. Aye and all. Miller. Listen to explain my vote. Permission granted. Well, actually, I want to rise to uh, talk about Intro 1010. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for your support on this. This bill would establish a costly civil penalty for parking 18-wheeled trucks and other overnight vehicles uh, in residential communities. The drivers of these commercial tra tractor trailers routinely abuse city parking regulations and degrade the quality of life of communities throughout the city. There are parks, homes, schools, churches that are undermined by the parking of these trucks. They also uh, are leaving pollution and debris in their wake. We have worked with NYPD to ramp up enforcement efforts, but these offenses have still continued. They continue, the current fines imposed on big rigs have not been effective in curbing their abusive practice either. They have deemed them just the course of doing business. In actuality, the greatest expense of the course of doing business has been to our communities. It has been to the health and the quality of life of our communities. Now we will send a clear message to the bad actors of operating these trucking, these trucking industries that the price of such flagrant abuse will no longer be tolerated. It will be steep. The increase in fines will go from $400 to $800. I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson, Transportation Committee Chair Adonis Rodriguez, the 34 co-sponsors for advancing this measure. I'd like to thank Committee Counsel Giovanni D, G, James D. Giovanni, uh, Elliot Lynn, and of course, Brandon Clark, Gregory Rose, my former LD, and G Joseph Goldblum for helping out on this legislation. The time has come to bring the force of the law down on these routinely flagrant acts of commercial trucking and abuse, and this measure is only the beginning of our endeavors. Uh, I'd also like to take uh, just a point of privilege. 
and say happy belated to the man who keeps us all safe, Mr. Carl Arbor. <laughs> Moya. Ayano. Powers. Ayano. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Today, we're going to be voting on a, a set of affordable housing units that are going to be created in Bushwick, of which 15% of those units are set aside for uh, supportive housing. Uh, Councilmember Rafael Salamanca has taken the lead and ensuring that we're building uh, affordable housing units for those that need it the most, and I wanna make sure that I follow that lead um, and encourage everybody to vote um, eye on all. And today is opening day in Major League Baseball, so let's go Mets. And I vote eye on all. I ask for order in this chambers. <laughs> Richards. Uh, permission, oh. I vote aye, but wanted to congratulate uh, Councilmember Miller on his persistence in, in getting this bill uh, over the finish line. It's long overdue for communities in the South Bronx and in Southeast Queens who are overburdened with these uh, heavy duty trucks. Uh, and it is my hope we'll follow up through this budget season with the NYPD to ensure that they uh, purchase more heavy duty uh, tow trucks for our neighborhoods. Uh, so with that being said, I vote aye once again, and I want to congratulate Councilmember Miller for getting this over the finish line. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. And I would like to, uh, first of all, thank all my colleagues who support all those bills related to religionary disease. As you know, the whole city of New York, but especially Manhattan as a borough has been negative impact by all those great individuals dying in the last couple of months or year because legionary disease. And one of the issues that we've been dealing with is the lack of reporting and the lack of transparency in New York City when it comes for New Yorkers to know how many inspections have been done in those schooling towers, what has been the result of those uh, inspections. So I'm happy to see all the packages of legislation and especially the one that also that I was able to include together with my colleague that will mandate a report, the reporting the results of cooling tower inspections and to repeal certain provision of local 77. We made the whole city of New York more transparent when it comes for these parties to have all the information or the results of those inspections related to cooling towers. With that, I vote aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye no. Torres. Aye no. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye no with the exception of preconsidered M149 accompanying Rezo uh, 815. Van Bramer. Aye no. Jaeger. Madam President, may I have an excuse to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I uh, agree very much with the goals of uh, Intro 1064, um, but I will not be voting for it today because I do not believe that something that drastically changes uh, the rules and regulations of how restaurants operate in the city uh, should have as the first violation a penalty. And I've suggested in the past that when we do bills like this, the first violation should be a warning, followed by the second violation being a penalty. And notwithstanding the fact that the penalty is slight, it's not um, if it's $200 that's somebody else's money. So for that reason and for that reason only, I will vote no on intro 1064. Um, I'd also like to congratulate um, a, a great hero, um, Ms. Hochstetter, for bring this matter to the council. Um, your leadership has been incredible. I've been following your story, and I'm proud to join uh, Councilman Levine in voting aye on intro 1308. I will not, uh, I vote no on uh, M147, resolution 813, M148, resolution 814, for reasons I previously stated, and I vote aye on the remainder. Thank you very much, Madam President.
Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of M149 and Resolution 815, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Resolution 805, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1064B, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions. And M147 and 148, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, and one negative. The revised land use call-ups vote is 47 in the affirmative, and zero negative. We'll now go into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to the committees as indicated on today's agenda. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? We are now going to be focused on resolutions at this time. I'll begin with Council Member Ku. Thank you, Majority Leader. Yeah. Uh, I must say, I am against uh, all the resolutions regarding to the marijuana uh, legislation, except uh, resolution 742A. Uh, I think the whole package is not good for the uh, for the city overall because we want to encourage people not smoking. Uh, we spend a lot of money and time now. We want to pass a legislation to, uh, for marijuana smoking, you will encourage uh, more young kids uh, to smoke marijuana, even though they haven't tried. They say, oh, now it's legalized. They will go to their parents, hey, dad, no, now it's legalized. No, I can smoke marijuana on the streets. No. So, uh, and besides, we don't know uh, in detail the health risk of smoking uh, pot. No, we don't know how much damage you have done to the, to the brain, especially when the smokers, they are young, between 14, 15, 16, or their age, they, their brain is still developing, right? So if you uh, overuse the drugs, you might harm them uh, permanently, you know? So there are a lot of things we don't know about, so I'm voting against these resolutions. Thank you, Council Member Ku. We'll now bring it to Council Member Adams. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Today, I'm introducing Reso 797, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. As you know, Title IX is a federal law that protects people from discrimination based on gender, education programs, or activities which receive federal financial <laughs> assistance. <laughs> Unfortunately, poor enforcement has limited its effectiveness. And as a result, many educational environments continue to be unfair, unwelcoming, and unsafe for many students. Currently, the New York City DOE has only one Title IX coordinator position for the largest school district in the entire country. With this resolution, I'm calling on the NYC DOE to maintain a minimum of seven Title IX coordinator positions with at least one coordinator in each borough field support center. Hiring additional DOE Title IX coordinators will bring us one step closer to ensuring that Title IX regulations are being appropriately met. In a city as large and diverse as ours, we must ensure that any educational establishment receiving funds from the national government provides equal opportunities to students regardless of gender or sexual orientation. Reso 797 is a necessary step to accomplish this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Adams. And just to remind all of my colleagues, we are speaking on the resolutions that we are about to vote on. 
So if there are any other members that would like to speak on the current resolutions, I will now call on Council Member Richards, followed by Council Member Levin, and followed by Council Member Miller. Again, just to reiterate, we're just speaking about the marijuana resolutions that we're voting on right now. Anything else will come after that during general discussion. All righty, I don't know whether to be concerned that uh, Council Member Koo is supporting my resolution or not, but, uh, but let's call it what it is. Uh, if you are a white person in New York City, it is legal to smoke marijuana. As a wise philosopher by the name of Jay-Z once said, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. When you look at the startling fact that just 25 white people were arrested out of 520 total arrests for marijuana in New York City over the course of the last quarter in 2018, it's hard to deny the fact that enforcement continues to be centered in communities of color. This is why we can't afford to delay legalization of cannabis in New York State for one more day. Albany must act yesterday to bring justice to communities that bear the scars of injustice, even as medical marijuana is available to more affluent New Yorkers across the state. That's why as we move towards legalization, both economic and social justice must elope at the altar of the floor before it's signed into law. As I've said in the past, our communities are not simply looking for contact, but to be the owners in this billion dollar budding industry giving out contracts. This package of resolutions moving forward Thank since you, a strong, I'm gonna shut Richards. up, but please sign on to uh, resolution 742, which allows us uh, here in New York City to decide our own destiny when it comes to Thank public you. consumption and civil penalty. Thank, Thank you, you, Council Madam. Member Richards. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'll bring it to Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, the passage of today's resolutions is a clear indication that New York City leaders are united in achieving comprehensive marijuana reform. It is long past time to pass marijuana legalization and bring some semblance of justice to communities. New York has long been the arrest capital of the world for marijuana uh, and disproportionately harming communities of color. We need to enact legislation to fully decriminalize cannabis for every neighborhood and commit to real restitution for the communities and families who have been impacted and wronged for, by decades of bad policy. We've learned from legalization efforts across the country and we have the tools to do this the right way. The series of resolutions being voted on today clear, pre, uh, present a clear roadmap to bring social and economic justice to New Yorkers. Uh, I'm sponsoring the resolution in support of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act. Um, and I'm proud of my colleagues in Albany who are doing such great work uh, to get that passed. The other resolution I'm sponsoring, 741, calls for inclusive state licensing that pr prioritizes those who have been wronged by the war on drugs in entrepreneurship and production, sale and distribution of marijuana. Too many people have been cut out of jobs, cut out of business investments, and been denied homeownership you, because Council of marijuana Member. prohibition. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Levin will now go to Council Member Miller, followed by Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Majority Leader. The facts are clear. Whether uh, I'm speaking on uh, resolutions 743, 744, the facts are clear. Whether arrests or summons and marijuana enforcement perpetuates racial discrimination towards New Yorkers of color, depriving future generations of higher education, employment, business, and homeowner opportunities, we have a moral obligation to end this legacy of misery and make them whole once again. Criminal records for petty marijuana offenses must not be sealed, but must be automatically and completely expunged. And a significant share of the new market reserved for minority businesses so that our aggrieved communities of color can, of, of color can have cannabis equity. Any effort at legalization that falls short of embracing these principles will not represent a true reform and failure to resolve the issues before us, the state before we adopt, they adopt the state budget will only perpetuate discrimination policies for black and brown New Yorkers. And I implore my colleagues in the state legislature to heed our call and pass these resolutions. Thank you. Quite welcome. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Now, Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, not going to be long, I will be voting no on all the resolutions for the reasons stated by Councilman Ku, uh, with the exception of Resolution 296, but I wish to state on the record that while I disagree 
uh, with the various whereas clauses in that resolution, I do agree with the conclusion uh, that um, families in NYCHA housing shouldn't be unnecessarily penalized because of a conviction by a member of the household. Uh, and for that reason, I will vote uh, yes on that resolution only, but no on all the remainders. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. Resolution 75A, an amended resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act and the governor to sign such legislation into law, which would legalize, regulate, and tax the sale of marijuana in New York State. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 296, a resolution calling on the New York City Housing Authority to add unlawful possession of marijuana and criminal possession of marijuana in the fourth and fifth degrees to its list of quote unquote overlooked offenses and stop considering these offenses as grounds for termination of tenancy. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 641, resolution calling on the coordination of the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services, the New York State Office of Court Administration, and the New York City District Attorneys to expunge the records of all city misdemeanor marijuana convictions. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 734A, an amended resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to ensure that any law passed to legalize the market for the adult use of cannabis allows the city to enact its own regulatory measures on issues unique to its location, including the home delivery and cultivation of cannabis in New York City. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 737A, an amended resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass legislation that grants New York City agencies the authority to regulate local licensing and adult use cannabis market in the city. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 738. Resolution calling upon New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation prohibiting vertical integration and promoting small business growth in the recreational marijuana industry. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 741A, an amended resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to introduce and pass and for the governor to sign legislation that prioritizes individuals with prior marijuana convictions in issuing licenses to sell recreational marijuana and requires other applicants for marijuana licenses to support the hiring of such individuals. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 742A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that grants localities the authority to regulate public consumption of marijuana within their jurisdictions, including the authority to determine whether to enact any penalties and how to enforce such penalties. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 743, a resolution calling on Congress to pass and the President to sign S1689, known as the Marijuana Justice Act of 2017, which would amend the Controlled Substances Act to provide for a new rule regarding the application of the act to marijuana and for other purposes. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. 
Resolution 744, resolution calling on the legislature to pass and the governor to sign a bill that remedies disparate burdens placed on people of color in the enforcement of marijuana prohibition by reinvesting tax revenue generated from legal marijuana in their communities and encouraging their participation in the legal marijuana industry. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 745, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation related to the reclassifi reclassifying of THC and all other marijuana-based products from a controlled substance to the equivalent of flower marijuana. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you. This is certainly an unprecedented day in New York City's council's history, and I will now like to move into general discussions. And at this time, we do not have any general discussions. We definitely have general discussion. <laughs> Oh, everyone's waving their hands now. This is exciting. Okay, let me take a, a look. All that want to speak, please raise your hands. Councilmember Rose. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm excited to seek support for two bills. Intro 1488, a local law to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to requiring the police department to obtain information on the disposition of sex offense cases and requiring the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice to report on outcomes of sex offense cases. Currently, the NYPD knows Thanks. how many sex-related complaints are received and how many subsequent arrests are made, but they lack information related to the number of convictions that are made in, rela in relation to sex crimes. In the spirit of transparency, we would like this information shared with both the NYPD and the City Council. Intro 1489, local law to amend the code requiring high volume of high, for higher services, dispatch service providers, and bases to report complaints about drivers concerning passenger safety to the Taxi and Limousine Commission. There is no publicly available data on the number of internal passenger safety complaints received by customers of for hire drivers or for drivers of other rideshare companies. This bill will ensure that all complaints given to these companies are reported to the TLC and will be made public. These bills will in increase transparency in regards to public safety concerns and will give the council as a body the opportunity to evaluate trends and possibly address these issues legislatively. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rose. We will now have Council Member Barron. Council Member Lander. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to make comments on the passing of Bob Slade, a good friend. He was an award-winning journalist, and he paved the way for so many others that came behind him. He was a pioneer. He was a news director at 98.7 KISS FM, and he was a part of a trio that hosted The Open Line, which was a community talk show, and his partners were Bob Pickett and James and Tumay. And they were unafraid of examining the psychological impact of racism on so many of the social conditions that we face. He was a great friend, and I just wanted to mark his passing and say that he will be sorely missed. Thank you, and we'll now bring it to Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, my Majority Leader. Uh, I want to uh, take my, uh, call my colleagues' attention to uh, uh, intros 1483 and 1484. Um, they will make New York City's shelter system more accessible to people who have pets. These bills join others in a package championed by the Speaker, Cory Johnson, to improve animal welfare citywide. Currently, people who are homeless and living with pets have limited options. Shelters are not pet accessible, and owners are forced to either give up cherished, a cherished member of their family or decide to not enter the shelter system. I've talked with people living on the street who have told me the reason they weren't in shelters because they couldn't bring their pet with them. For someone who has lost so much else in their life, losing their pet can be unthinkable. 
The issue is especially pronounced for survivors of domestic violence. Being forced to give up a pet can be a major factor in a person deciding to stay in an abusive situation. Few DV shelters accept pets, yet they provide critical emotional support and can be an important healing tool for people experiencing trauma. We need to strengthen resources to keep people with their animals, love, animal loved ones and help support their well-being, stress reduction, and stability in their lives. Intro 1483 and 1484 will help us better understand the scope of the problem and how to increase shelter capacity for people with pets. We know that a one-size-fits-all response is not the answer. Creating a citywide plan paired with greater data will allow us to examine where the needs are greatest and what the practical solutions can be implemented locally. This is about finding solutions that work and that fit into our citywide goals of better serving New York's population who find themselves homeless. Thank you to the Urban Resources Institute, My Dog is My Home, HSU, and Human.NYC for their partnership on this and service to New Yorkers facing housing instability. And for many people, their pet is their family and where they call home, no mat and, and where they call home. No, mat no one should be forced to leave a member of their family behind. Thank you. Council Member Miller. Thank you, Majority Leader. My colleagues, I wish to highlight the fact that today, March 28th, 2019, marks the two-year anniversary of our brothers and sisters at IBEW Locals 3 ongoing struggle against charter communications. 730 days ago, 1,800 Spectrum members, roughly 10% of whom live in Southeast Queens, walked the picket line after Charter, the second largest cable provider in the country, attempted to push con a contract on Local 3 members that eliminated his pension and gutted his members' health care benefits, which would have forced him to pay unaffordable monthly premiums and high-cost overheads. Last year, Charter rate in roughly $44 billion in revenue last year, while members exhausted their Unemployed, state unemployment insurance benefits, which supplemented weekly benef benefits paid to them by the union's emergency fund. A number of Local 3 members have become homeless or separated from their families. Meanwhile, Charter has reportedly built our city out of $6 million in ad revenue, agreed to a $174 million settlement with the state's attorney general for fraud last December, had his license to operate revoked in a vote by the state Public Service Commission and defaulted on his franchise agreement in the city on two separate occasions. Charter has established a pattern of deceit against its own workers and, and consumers in the name of boosting its profits margin and must be held accountable for its deception. Well-paying middle-class jobs, health care, generational security that has been achieved through union membership are the core principles of this city for which our company, our, our company has this company has demonstrated contempt and certainly no appreciation. We will not tolerate charter, charter communication behavior. It must come to the table and negotiate with Local 3 in good faith on this impasse. I urge the brothers and sisters in this movement to stand strong and that they are not forgotten. Thank you, Council Member Miller. We will now have Council Member Costantinides followed by Council Member Moya. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, I ask my colleagues to support um, intro 1480, introduced with Councilmember uh, Eric Ulrich, that would create the Office of Marine Debris Disposal. Uh, our, our waterways are uh, littered, literally, uh, with boats, with other debris that have made it unsafe. They pose environmental hazards, uh, and we need to be able to get those boats out of the water that have been abandoned and left there to rot uh, that pose a risk. Uh, I also want to ask my colleagues to support Resolution 803. Uh, I know we have uh, Eliza and some of the young people from the Sunrise Movement who were here uh, marching at City Hall uh, for, for climate action just a little bit over two weeks ago. Uh, and this resolution would support the creation of a Green New Deal on a federal level. Uh, the time to act on climate is now. Uh, we need to hear the voices of these young people who are courageously stepping up and saying that it is time for us to act. So thank you, Eliza, for being here and for, for setting a path for us to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Moya. Thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Uh, I'm speaking uh, in support of Intro 1487. 
uh, with every neighborhood-wide rezoning, uh, thousands and thousands of New Yorkers have their future thrown uh, into uncertainty. Uh, right now, we're seeing long-term residents in East Harlem and Inwood or along Jerome Avenue, the very uh, curators of their community's character uh, being forced out of their homes. Uh, these neighborhoods are becoming primed uh, for new development. More communities are next in line for these massive rezonings, and unfortunately for their residents, when they show up to the zoning committee and they beg me to tell them how a rezoning is going to affect them, I can't. The very best I can do is offer an educated guess. We have absolutely no quantitative data on how a neighborhood rezoning will affect gentrification or secondary displacement. And when we're talking about massive rezonings that will directly uh, affect thousands of New Yorkers, uh, that's just not good enough. Uh, this bill will require that we study the effects of neighborhood-wide rezonings on secondary displacements so that we no longer leap before we look. Good data inspires good policy, and if we're going to dig our way out of this city's housing crisis, we're going to need both. Uh, this bill has the potential to have a concrete and positive effect on the working class New Yorkers most acutely affected by neighborhood rezonings. I want to specifically thank the Legal Aid Society and Make the Road New York for their advocacy work and their invaluable perspective on this bill and fighting for housing justice. Thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, and I want to thank all of you for all of your work, particularly for Women's History Month. A great deal was accomplished, but I just want to end with Words matter. We are all here. We all exist. It is a struggle many people face every day, the ability to exist in this world. It is our role here in this body to devote our every day to bringing people together, to empowering people, to providing solutions for people who do not have a voice and cannot find their way. New York is unique in that way. Every day we have to show people all over the world, to show people that it can be done, that people of all races and religions and economic backgrounds and whatever gender we identify with, that we can live together and that it can be done. And this is the important responsibility of living in New York City. The movement of labeling people has become a dangerous one. Words matter, words matter. Mass shootings don't just start or just begin. They begin with words, they begin with ideas, and they begin with them coming into a chorus. Let us be careful with our words. Let us be mindful of our colleagues. Let's continue to bring our communities together and to show the world that it absolutely can be done. This is the great responsibility of New York City. There's no other city in the world that has the level of diversity that's in this body. And it is our responsibility to carry that responsibility with dignity, with honor, and to have every single person that walks into City Hall feel welcome to being here. Thank you, and I would now like to turn it over to the speaker to close out today's meeting. Thank the you. The stated meeting of March 28, 2019 is hereby adjourned.